Hello my little vegan chocolate puddings. Today I'm gonna get happy. That's what's gonna happen. I've got a Lapsang Souchong and I'm full of piss and vinegar about what it means to be a witch. <laughs> how happy it makes me, how much it's improved my life. I really have been meaning to sort of make a video where I just talk about this at my leisure and enjoy myself talking about it. Um, I did a, a tag a really long time ago. One second. Mm. I know you won't begrudge me, darlings. I did a tag a very long time ago called the Grumpy Witch Tag. It was started by Roller Derby Witch and a lot of people got on board with it. And uh, there was questions in there about things that you don't like about being a witch, things that annoy you, things that were problematic for you, the worst point for you as a witch, the spell that didn't come true, the thing that went wrong, the thing that set on fire or whatever. And it was really interesting. I loved getting people's responses to that. And I loved getting to understand what my responses were to that. And today I would like to offer the opposite thing. I'd like to offer, offer a happy witch tag. So if you have a witchy YouTube or a witchy Instagram and you would like to answer some or all of these questions, then please do go right ahead. I would love to know what it is that makes you the happiest about being a witch. And you can also use the happy witch tag questions as journal prompts as well. So I'm gonna leave them in the description. I'm gonna go through them myself in this video, obviously. I have not actually decided in advance what I'm gonna say, so I'm gonna be interested to know what comes through because it's not something that I have thought through in any great depth. It's not something where I already know what my answers to the questions are. I actually wrote this out a really long time ago and then put it to one side. I put it in my, um, in my, uh, folder where I put my my sort of notes for videos that I might want to do and I'm just coming to it now and thinking it would be a really good idea so I actually haven't read through these for ages I'm just going to see what comes up the first question on the happy witch tag list of questions is what makes you happiest about the fact that you're a witch and I would like to posit to you that if you're going to answer this question in a video or for a journal prompt or whatever it's okay if you think about what makes you happiest right now, because I think that's fair as well. I do think it's difficult to talk about what makes you happiest overall. It's kind of like answering the question of what is your favourite movie of all time. A lot of people find that very difficult to do. There are a lot of good movies. And in much the same way, there are a lot of really beautiful aspects of witchcraft. Um, much as fundamentalist Christians who are terrified of witchcraft would try to make you believe that there is not. There are plenty of upsides to the craft. Okay. So what makes me happiest about the fact that I'm a witch? At the moment, at the time of filming this, obviously we are in the season of the witch and as witches will know, every season is our season. But you know what I mean by season of the witch, it's spooky season, it's the run up to Samhain, we're on that final leg of the journey towards Samhain. I'm very excited, I have a beautiful ritual planned. I like getting excited with other witches in my online community because I'm not in a coven or anything like that. I don't usually hang out with witches on the day to day, but I do in the online sphere. And it's really lovely to just get that sense of excitement that we are all feeling as we move towards Samhain. And I know it's not just witches that feel it. There's lots of people on a sincere spiritual journey of one kind or another. They would not necessarily attribute the word witch to themselves, assign the word witch to themselves. Anyway, they wouldn't call themselves witches, but they are feeling the, the wonderful uh, sort of seasonal vibes that happen. And it's definitely a lovely opportunity for psycho-spiritual reflection. And I'm sorry, I know not everybody that watches me is on the Northern Hemisphere, but you can appreciate that for those of us who are heading towards that sour energy, that colder, the turning into the colder months and everything. You know, it's pretty magical. So I would say at the moment that makes me happy happiest. I would also say that overall, more of an overall thing that makes me happiest about being a witch is that um, I always have this extra thing that I do when I'm facing a challenge or dealing with a problem. So obviously there's going to be things that I know I need to do on a practical level. I know on a sort of earthly, pragmatic level, I need to do certain things to deal with the issue. But I also always have the option to do a ritual, to do a spell, to throw cards to explore the issue further, to ask spirit, to ask my goddess, to, you know, analyse my dreams. I know that these things are not all the domains of the domain of, of witches but these are all big things in my craft so for me it's like I've got this extra toolkit that I can use whenever things are getting a bit sticky and and I'm unsure about stuff and that makes me feel extra empowered it gives me very much that strong internal locus of control I really could talk about what makes me happiest about being a witch all day there are so many things that make me so happy about being a witch um, but let's just stick with those two it gives me a strong internal locus of control a sense that there's more that I can do a sense that that things are in my hands more but I've got that extra set of keys you know um, and then also Samhain I mean yeah just being really in my element 
during spooky season is really lovely. But can I just say, just because I know um, I'm sort of giving three three things here that make me happiest, and that's not really how this works, but. I just want to say as well that being a witch has given me such a sense of something that is a constant in my life and that's not necessarily so important to me all the time but sometimes it is when the road gets rough and things get very topsy-turvy it's comforting to know that I have always been a witch in some capacity in some way it's like I was born with the seed of it inside of me and even from very young I was exhibiting my witchiness and I know that that is what I will always be I know in my heart and soul and in every cell in my body that I will always be a witch and um, I'm not saying that for the benefit of uh, <laughs> of anyone who might come into the comments and start you know quoting bible verses to me because I know you think you've still got a shot but honestly you don't <laughs> I will always be a witch and that's something that is very comforting in crazy times the second question is which practice do you tend to enjoy most in your witchcraft and why and I would have to say that it does change but at the present time, the practice I really enjoy the most is... Mm, this is really hard, actually. Hang on. What do I enjoy the most? At the moment, I'm really enjoying getting back into my book of mirrors. You know, spiritual journaling, witchy journaling. Journaling about what it is that I want to achieve. Um, I've done a lot of writing about the ritual that I'm doing for Samhain. I'm doing a double ritual for Samhain. And one of them is going to be a, a rededication to my matron, Hell, and a communion with her. And the other one is going to be some cord cutting and release working and a ritual around that. So it's going to be like a, you know, the spell in the middle of the ritual, rather like the Brazil nut in the middle of a chocolate or whatever. So uh, there's going to be that as well. And I have been sort of hashing it out and writing it down and stuff. So that is very um exciting you know just sort of just planning it out figuring out what I want to do feeling into my feelings about it thinking about what I want it to look like where it's going to take place in my apartment and things like that so I'm really enjoying that I had a major connection to devotionals at the beginning of 2020 and also more recently and in 2019 I did a lot of devotional work as well to the mother mary and also to hell so that was really interesting and, and beautiful and I liked that a lot in my practice too. At the moment I am not doing as many devotionals, I'm doing more card readings, I'm working with a deck at the moment, my working deck is the Paulina Cassidy Tarot just for people that might be interested and I'm doing a lot of readings and um I'm asking my my uh, my sort of guiding lights, if you will, my goddesses for guidance. But I'm also just sort of leaning into the readings, um, you know, just for strategy and stuff like that. So some of them feel more spiritual, I suppose, than others. Well, they all feel spiritual because when I turn the cards over, I'm like, whoa, Nelly, this is absolutely what was meant to be. Um, and it's really it's always very intoxicating. So I do like like flipping cards at the moment as well, I must say. But devotional definitely in 2019 and 2020 has been strongly a, a thing that I I've loved to do to sit down and do a devotional to hell is just sumptuous beautiful and if you would like to know more about how I connect with my goddesses I will leave a video down below for you where I talk all about that I talk all about channeling writing during devotionals I talk about the beads that I use I talk about magical words that I use or ritual or sacred words that I use that are associated with them so if you want to know about that go down below I'll also leave a video down below that I made while I was out in Amsterdam this year about what it is like to work with mother Mary and also with the dark mother hell so if you want to know about that combination and how that works for me and and whatnot then I'll leave that down below for you as well question number three how have you changed in positive ways as a result of practicing the craft I would say that it makes me so much more fizzy in a world where it's not always been easy to be fizzy and I have certainly not felt much effervescence at certain points in my life I've struggled with things, <laughs> haven't we all? All right, I'm not a special case in that regard. And witchiness and the craft, the practice of it, the thought of it, the concept of it, everything around it has brought me that fizz when little to nothing else could. So I think it's made me fizzy. It's, it makes me excited about, about a challenge. It makes me interested in a problem and how I'm going to solve that problem. It brings like yeah effervescence just bubbliness to things that you wouldn't normally perceive to be bubbly 
it, it really lifts up and elevates experiences that you wouldn't normally expect to get such a sense of elevation out of. So you can apply witchiness to anything and find that you approach it as the highest version of yourself. That's how I feel. That's if that makes any remote sense. Does anybody else find that? You know, I think that if I if I didn't have that witch state and that witch mentality, I wouldn't be able to bring so much gusto to the things I do and the things I offer in my business and the, the conversations I have with my friends and, and loved ones. And, you know, I just feel like being a witch is definitely a potent part of that. It's definitely like in the middle uh, of, of that and very much at the centre of it. Let me just go into how that relates to how I've changed. Basically, I for people that haven't been watching the channel very long or don't watch all of my content, which is fair because there's a shitload of it, um, I struggled a lot with mental health issues in my past. I am certainly not free of the uh, intense vice-like grip of depression. It still visits me, for sure. But it is nowhere near as bad as it was when I was younger. And my situation externally is nowhere near as dire. I have access to far more resources now than I did. And I'm a very different person in the way that I, in the way that I view it and the way that I frame it. So witchcraft has been a huge part of that. Coming back to witchcraft, owning my witchcraft, really putting my best foot forward with it and then talking about it, discussing it with other witches, teaching it. That stuff really made the difference. So that's how I would say it's changed me. I haven't always been this fizzy little ball of fizz and I'm not like that all the time, but I'm like that a lot more now and it is largely thanks to maintaining a spiritual practice and considering myself to be a witch. And if you would like me to teach you some basic um, bits and pieces, magically speaking, if you would like me to teach you uh, a little poppet magic, a little bit of candle magic, a little bit of record keeping, you know, your book of mirrors, your book of shadows, purchase my Neon Witch course, darlings. It is a video course course i think it's 10 videos in length go down below i'll leave all the details down there if you have not purchased neon witch and you would like me to teach you some magical and witchy things not only about the practicals but about the mindset as well then you were, will probably find my neon witch course to be of help question number four in the happy witch tag what has been the most positive result you have had from a spell or ritual oh i don't tend to reveal this very much mm. <laughs> um did i just snort then i did and i'm just gonna leave that in the most positive result that i've had from a spell or ritual i mean the thing is baby cakes rather than get into individual things, rather than share things I've cast for, for example, which I don't always, I have talked about a few things that I've cast for. I'm definitely not completely oath bound to myself on the subject. I do talk about it sometimes, but rather than reveal things, I would rather just talk about what has been the most positive result I've had from doing spells and rituals overall. And one of the most positive results I've had is realizing that the shit works. <laughs> I mean, that is always positive. That always feels very um you know very useful very empowering very strengthening and it also captivates me it it makes me fall back in love with the process of what it means to be a human and to be having this experience and to not know everything to find that there are things outside of the bounds of our ability to understand them that things are happening that we haven't quite put the bits and pieces together for yet and knowing that there is just that sacred mystery that you know you live on its tongue and you are totally enraptured if you want to be and encapsulated if you want to be by its majesty and, and you you hear its gnashing teeth like cracks of thunder or something. I don't know. I'm getting very poetic now. But, you know, it's just that feeling when something comes together, when I see that a ritual has allowed me to open up a gateway that wasn't open to me before. When I see that a spell has brought forth what I intended to manifest and it, it actually plays out in front of me there's something about that that is just majestic as fuck and it will never ever ever get old question number five is how has your craft enriched the lives of others how has my craft enriched the lives of others I love this question that I wrote myself good for me pat myself on the back there <laughs> I think that my craft has enriched the lives of people around me who have seen me grow and who have taken support from me or been inspired by me or felt that I was there for them in some way because obviously the craft enriches me so much and that then has a knock-on effect on the people I love in my life to whom I can give more and for whom I can be more. So I think that's very much part of it. That's how the craft has enriched other people's lives. The other obvious answer, I suppose, is what I do for work, what I do in my creative life and with my business that is massively informed massively 
heavily informed by witchcraft. I talk about witchcraft and sovereign spirituality and spiritual spiritual path design in my um, sessions and readings with clients and also in my videos, my resources that I offer to the world. So that's definitely a big part of it. It actually informs my work. I talk about it as part of my work. I help a lot of witches with blocks that they're having and things that they're going through. So, you know, that's definitely a part of it too. I, I hope that I've enriched the lives of many witches with my approach and my message. And I hope that witches that come along and they see my videos are left feeling in some way enriched or informed by what I make. I would like to say that there are a lot of ways in which it's not necessarily the craft that has sort of helped other people um, in terms of, you know, volunteer work that I've done, um, charity donations that I've made, food donations that I've made and stuff like that, because I don't think that it's the fact that I'm a witch that makes me do those things, just as I don't think that it's the fact that somebody is a Christian that ultimately means that they do something nice. There's every likelihood that they would have done that nice thing and taken the time to show that compassion without the messages of Christ or the teachings of the church or, you know, uh, membership to that community. So I think that's important to note is that, you know, there are a lot of ways in which I have strived to enrich people's lives or try to empower them or make them feel better in some way or try to, to even a playing field or try to address a problem that does not necessarily affect me, but it affects others. But I don't think that it's my witchcraft that gives me that instinct. I just think that it's my humanity that gives me that instinct. But it is my witchcraft that I think allows me to sustain those aspects of generosity and compassion. I think that my witchcraft is responsible for a lot of the comfort that gives me the resilience. It's responsible for a lot of the empowerment that gives me the perseverance that I may show. And I don't think my resilience and my perseverance is anywhere near where I would like it to be and where I think it should be. But for the, for, for the resilience and the perseverance that I do show, the witchcraft is a big part of that because it, it fills my cup so that I can then take the overflow and, and fill other people's cups and, and do my bit as it were. The sixth question in my happy witch tag is what are you most looking forward to trying in your craft? and why? Hmm, this is an interesting one. Very interesting one. Let me think for a second about what is upcoming with me. What is on the horizon? What do I want to try? Oh, yes. Okay. So, um, one thing that I'm looking forward to trying is a completely new arrangement, or, well, some parts of it are going to be completely differently arranged anyway, of my Book of Shadows. I am moving back into my Book of Shadows quite a bit. I am rearranging things in there, sorting through things, and finding something that works for me a bit differently. And I'm hoping that I will be showing you guys what I've come up with, so I can give you some inspiration, maybe get you thinking about what you might want to do with yours, or, or address how you are using that particular tool in your craft so that's something I'm excited to try for definite um, is just really sort of playing around with my record keeping playing around with the amount that I access the tool of the book of shadows which is not very much at all at the moment I'm more of a book of mirrors long journaling you know meandering pondering type of a witch but the book of shadows sometimes gathers dust sometimes it just doesn't get the use that I would like it to and my record keeping in certain ways has become a little rusty. And that's fine because it's not like it's something that I massively regret. It's something that I think witches go through sometimes. And, you know, you have to start to change things up. You have to start to look at things a bit differently and think about different ways that you might like to do it. And that's what I'm doing. So that's something that I am definitely excited about. I'm excited to try that for sure. I am personally going to be doing some pretty major workings at the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021 for some very specific things that I would like to see manifesting next year, starting next year and going onwards from that in the material realm. Things to do with home, things to do with location, just that kind of thing, basically. And I would be, and a little bit to do with some business stuff as well, actually, that there's another aspect to it. It's very pentacles. <laughs> It's all very earthy, sort of like earth concerns, consensus concerns, as it were. Um, and I'm very excited to see how that goes. I'm excited to see what I can try and what I bring in. And I'm going to be using some different ways of obtaining those things than I usually would. And I'm definitely going to be doing like some servitor creation and some sigil magic. But I'm also going to be trying other things. I'm going to be doing some scripting as well to achieve these things. But I'm going to be trying some combinations of these things as well and just trying to get a bit experimental. By the way, darlings, for everybody who's been asking me for a video on scripting, the video on scripting is coming 
as well as a course on scripting that I'll be offering over in my online store as well. So don't worry that my perspective on scripting and everything I've learned about how to make it successful is definitely in the works. Mm. Mm. Question number seven, what do you like the most about community, witchy community, either online or offline or both? Um, I love this question because I spend a lot of time in online witchy community. And as I think I previously mentioned in this video, little to no time in witchy community outside of the online sphere. Um, you know, I have a couple of friends who, who dabble for sure, and it's nice to chat to them. But essentially all of my community is an online experience where my witchhood is concerned. And the thing that I like the most about it is the constant inspiration that I feel that I get from being a part of the conversation. I really love the fact that I can scroll my Instagram feed or I can scroll my Facebook page feed or I can scroll YouTube in my subscriptions and just access the thoughts of loads of witches that are on their journey and doing their thing, having issues, solving issues, changing and recording that, documenting it, teaching, explaining things from their point of view. There is a lot of inspiration and it does keep me interested. It's one of the things that keeps me interested in the path is having that sense of what is out there. What are people doing? How are people feeling about their craft as well? And I'm not saying that if I didn't have access to that, I wouldn't witch anymore because I certainly have taken some breaks from community since I've been doing this. Believe me, <laughs> I shit you not. Breaks from social media are absolutely needed. Um, <laughs> they're needed in this racket. But I do find that whenever I'm feeling positive about social media where witchy stuff is concerned, that's why it's because it's so inspiring. And it, it really sort of urges me to think about what I think about certain things that I just simply may not have thought of or I may not have asked myself that question. And there's something really enticing about somebody bringing a dialogue to you and sort of therefore enticing you to think, what do I think of that? I haven't really engaged my brain to think what my own answer to that would be. So it's very thought provoking. And there are many, many things that are discussed in the witchy community that I do not get involved with. I don't actually publicly throw my hat into the ring, but I take what I'm watching and I, I go away and I journal about it or I think about it. I turn it over in my mind whilst I'm at my altar. And that really does help. So even though I don't get involved uh, often in discussions in a public way, I definitely take these discussions to my witchhood and ask myself where I fall on that particular, on the spectrum or in terms of the question that we're focusing on in the community. So that's also a very interesting part of it as well. Um, let me just have a look what the next one is. Question number eight, how do you envision your craft evolving positively in the future? I envision for my craft evolving positively in the future. I envision, as I said, uh, moving fully back into my BOS again, my Book of Shadows, feeling like it's a really workable system. I really enjoy it and I open it nearly as much as my Filofax. Where's my Filofax? Oh, it's on my lap. Of course it is. It's like my little cat. <laughs> I will open it nearly as much as I open this puppy. Um, by the way, if you want to know what's in this puppy, if you're a stationary nut and you would like to know how I use this thing, I will leave my Filofax tour video down below for you. You're welcome. <laughs> Isn't it funny how for some people watching a Filofax tour video would be like pulling teeth and for other people it's all they want to do of an afternoon is watch Filofax tour videos. It's quite funny that isn't it? It's a funny old world. So yes, I envision going into my BOS far more completely, feeling like it's a very workable system. I envision having um, more shrines and more altars when I get the space to do so. I envision having other spaces for other things um, and a sort of just... Um, having different focus areas with those different places. That's something that I do envision. Um, what else do I envision? I mean, to be honest with you, I am excited for what the future holds, partly because I'm not sure what it will look like for me. I know I'll be a witch, but I, I do wonder if there's more deities in the works for me. I wonder what kinds of big sort of fireworks, witchy experiences I'm going to have, what breakthroughs, what revelations, and I envision those things for my future, but I don't know exactly how they're gonna look. And I feel like that's okay, because for me, I know that I can manifest something without knowing the fine detail of it. And in fact, sometimes that's quite good for me because I've got a strong imagination and I've got a really strong sense of what I want, what I need and what is necessary. And, you know, when you've been a witch for as long as I've been a witch, you know that spirit, <laughs> spirit will, 
will sort of argue with that all the way and you might often miss the thing that you really need to see or you really need to bring in because your ego is absolutely convinced that what you need to go after is that what you need things to look like is like this and spirit is like would you just take your hand off the wheel for a minute so that we can have a look at the larger topography of of your desire and your needs and it's like no my ego my little ego knows <laughs> what it is that i need and what it is that I should be going after, what it is that something should look like. So I find that quite funny, um, you know, that I have learned that with the, sometimes the package that you, that you order just doesn't, I mean, sometimes the thing that you order, if you will, doesn't come in the packaging that you expected. <laughs> It's still the thing that you ordered, but the the through route, the way to manifestation just doesn't look how you expect it will look. And that's okay. Number nine, how do you keep your witchcraft practice healthy, happy and productive? I don't put shit loads of pressure on myself. That is the first thing that I will say. I do not put shit loads of pressure on myself. If I do not want to go to the altar, I simply do not go to the altar. I am completely aware that there are other ways for me to witch in this world. And if being at the altar is not it, then it's not it. And it's okay. I'm going to witch in other ways because I, I do um, practice my craft every day in some form. You know, um, you know, I, I made a meal for my my best friend and I the other night. And that was absolutely a witchy act as I was making it. I was really focusing on putting the loving energy and the intention in there and investing my focus in the the, the practice of, of nurturing me and my friend by giving us food. I was I was really communing with um, with the planet. I was communing with gratitude. I was communing with the empowerment that I was having in that moment of manifesting something, alchemizing ingredients into a delicious meal and there was something very witchy about that it definitely felt like a gorgeous ritual and I didn't have to be anywhere near my altar <laughs> well I was quite near my altar my flat's only small but um I didn't have to be anywhere near my altar if you know what I mean to be witching so I know that the witching is going to come around in some form and if it's not altar work if it's not based on that that's okay I think that there are lots of witches that give themselves a very hard time and you know that that's uh, that's a sad thing i do think that there is such a thing as being like a hypothetical witch and seeing yourself as a witch but not actually witching you know not really connecting to the word witch as a verb and one of my goals is to get witches off of that fence of inaction and help them to take action and to be witching. However, I do not think witching needs to come in this very, very rigid, prescriptive box where it's like, it has to look like this. You have to witch at your altar every morning. You have to practice at every sabbat. You have to. No, you don't. No, you do not. Um, and I think that that's something I would say that makes my practice healthy, happy and productive is not to put shit loads of pressure on myself and to know that when I'm witching, it's going to come in different forms and it's going to be beautiful. OK, final question in the happy witch tag. What's one piece of advice you would share with other witches to help them make their path more positive? The piece of advice that I want to share is lay down the burden of proof and just back slowly away from it as far as you can. This is something that comes up a lot in my um, in my discussions with clients when we're talking about the spiritual journey, the ownership of witchhood and how that's going to look and really designing the sovereign spiritual path and making it your own. There are lots of people that I work with who struggle with not being able to prove um, what they're doing, the belief that they have around what they're doing. They, they struggle um, to, they struggle with the feeling that they need to be able to explain every element of what they're doing. And it's almost a self surveillancing thing where they see themselves, you know, wanting to do something witchy, wanting to do a ritual, wanting to do a devotional, wanting to work with a goddess that's calling them. But they feel that there's this, there's this part of their ego that thinks, okay, but how would I explain this? Like, how would I explain this in a board meeting if, if people in my life were in the room wanting to know why I do this? You know, how, would, how am I going to explain this to my partner so that it makes sense? And actually, some of the most potent things about your journey of witchhood are just not explainable. <laughs> they cannot really be put into words. And even at the very end of your life, they may not make sense. And it's okay. So that is something that I will say. And I think people from a secular point of view, people who've been raised in a, in a home where there was no religion and religion was considered to be really a throwback, really an, an anachronism and something that's caused a lot of problems in the world. 
those people when they grow up and they think I'm a fucking witch you know I want to do witchy things they will probably have a deep insecurity about what are my parents going to think if I ever tell them or what would my parents say if they ever found out you know some people are with a partner that is very secular and just you know does not believe anything like hardcore non-spiritual atheist and I think for those people it's difficult because they feel like they want to open up about what they're doing or they would like to have an altar in their apartment that they maybe share with this um, with this hardcore non-spiritual atheist partner. And they think, oh my God, like, is my partner going to laugh? Is my partner going to be okay with it? Is my partner going to be freaked out by it? Are they going to wonder if we still have common ground anymore, enough to be lovers? So that's very difficult. On the other hand, you've got people that have a very religious family or a very religious um, you know, partner or friends. And for them, there's a whole different kind of worry. And to me, and of course, this involves other things. It's not just about feeling that you have to explain your witchcraft in order to legitimise it. But for the purposes of this question, what's one thing that you would um, advise which is to help them make their path more positive? I would say, yeah, just do away with that because you're, you're not going to be able to explain how your relationship with your matron deity, for example, is really, really real any more than somebody can explain the holy trinity to you and things like that really it's just ultimately like this is a set of beliefs and we're very convinced that they're true for us and that's it but what i will say is that the proof that you can look for if you really feel silly because for a lot of people they feel silly witching they have the instinct that they want to sit in front of somewhere where there's a collection of things in an arrangement that makes some sort of spiritual sense to them and light a candle and just it, you know get empowered and just yeah feel it and a lot of people feel silly about that and i would say if you feel silly about that recognize that you are still searching for a form of proof but it's the proof that whatever you want to do is going to have a, a tangible positive effect on your reality that is the proof that you're looking for so in other words baby cakes you want to take it from looking for the proof that it's real to looking for the proof that it works for you that's the form of proof that you're looking for. And if you go in search of that proof, I think you will find it in droves. You will find it in spades. You'll find it in buckets, darling. Big mystical buckets of proof that the things that you want to do when they are when when you apply them to your life, that practical application of witchcraft to your life, things just elevate, you know, things just start start coming together. You feel better what's wrong with that why can that not be reason enough to fucking do something especially in this world um well you know <laughs> not anything <laughs> obviously i think the use of crack makes somebody feel better for a while but i wouldn't advise it but you know witchcraft can be the good crack okay so <laughs> but i'm digging myself a massively deep hole here but anyway let me get out of that hole now before it gets any deeper and say that I'm so happy that you came with me on this exploration of these 10 questions that I wrote down for the happy witch tag. I hope that they serve you in your journaling. I hope that they serve you in any response that you wanna to make to this. You can hashtag it happy witch tag and we can all have a gay old time looking at what is going on for other people in their witchcraft, what is making them feel happy about it, what is making you feel positive and uplifted in your witchcraft. And Darlings, I'll leave some other things down below if you want to work with me, if you want to have a witchy brainstorming session with me and get creative with your magic or figure out what your sovereign journey is going to look like for you, we can do that. If you have deep hang-ups about the spiritual journey, if you feel that you are a witch in resistance or a hypothetical witch and you would like to talk to me about getting this show on the road, you can purchase either that or you can purchase a spiritual counselling session and we will look at what is at the root of those issues and how we can start to help you apply witchcraft to your life in a practical way. I also have a Patreon, my darlings, and I am going to be delivering an Afterthoughts video to my patrons about this very subject. So I'm going to deep dive into other things in that video for my doll faces and pop tarts over on Patreon. So if you want to get access to my Afterthoughts video series, my one card riff every single month, access to the Discord where we hang out and talk about witchy stuff and other things and other treats as well, please go over to my Patreon and take a look. My Patreon enables me to hire an assistant now so that I can get more stuff done and make more awesome research resources like this so I want to thank all of my patrons for doing what they do for me and believing in me it really means a lot much love darlings and blessed be